Now we asked Mr. Wisdom Akpalo from State University of New York to reflect on these findings. Please welcome up Mr. Wisdom Akpalo. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for inviting me. And uh, most importantly, I want to express my profound gratitude to Sida uh, uh, for uh, helping me to acquire uh, uh, my PhD program here in, uh, in Sweden. So I'm a di direct beneficiary of development aid. <laughs> okay, so I uh, just started by uh, saying a big thank you to uh, Sida uh, <laughs> for supporting me uh, to study in Gothenburg, uh, where I had my PhD, and I'm very proud of. Uh, in fact, the fact that two of us out of the four Africans here benefited from uh, the aid that we received from CEDA uh, speaks to the fact that aid is indeed making an impact. Uh, we were not just selected at random. The fact that we, are, we have been selected for doing something good means that uh, we can attest to the fact that aid is making an impact. Uh, so, uh, as rightly pointed out, uh, we have realized that aid is indeed playing a very important role. Uh, in uh, developing countries, and uh, aid has helped some of the countries to transition from uh, being low-income countries to middle-income countries. Uh, but as we know, there is a very fine line between some of the uh, uh, low-income countries and the, uh, the middle-income countries. So it is very important that even for countries that have transitioned to middle-income countries, uh, the poor in those countries continue to receive some aid. In fact, as indicated here, I think if you are poor and you live in a very poor country among your peers, uh, it is better than being very poor and living in a middle-income country. So it must be very depressing indeed to be poor and living in a middle-income country. So those who are poor and uh, are in middle-income countries certainly uh, need help. Uh, now we also know that there is a new challenge that has emerged uh, from the uh, from uh, what we understand uh, in climate science, uh, indicating that uh, although these countries, some of them have transitioned to uh, become middle-income countries, they still have the challenges that are imposed by uh, the ch uh, changing uh, climate. Uh, indeed, even without talking, about, uh, without talking about the changing climate, the growth that has been experienced uh, in Africa in recent times has partly been due to the fact that there has been extensive exploitation of natural resources. In fact, about a third of the growth that Africa has registered in recent times, which has made Africa look so good, uh, comes from uh, over-harvesting of fish stocks, depletion of soil capital, and then uh, extraction of uh, forest stocks. So uh, if you look at it from the long-term perspective, uh, this growth may not be sustainable. So, uh, and then add to the problem is this uh, changing climate, which is becoming a very serious issue. So, uh, and now we understand that there are funds available, as has been pointed out this morning, that uh, potentially Africa can have access to. But we know that there are some challenges that are making it very difficult for Africa to assess some of these funds. And uh, the question would be, why is it that we have so much funds going around, but Africa is uh, uh, not taking advantage of this? And we can speak to a few uh, important uh, points. For example, uh, we know that there is very limited knowledge of climate science in Africa. In fact, uh, when I studied in Gothenburg and went back to Ghana trying to do some work on fisheries management, I realized that I was alone. And this is not only in uh, natural resource management, it's also in climate science in general. So there is very limited capacity on the continent to address these pertinent issues. Now, if we do not know what we have, we cannot sell it. We cannot assess the markets if we cannot, for example, determine what addition we have made to the stock of climate, that, uh, the stock of uh, greenhouse gases that we've been able to sequester with our, our forest stocks. So it is very important that uh, we provide knowledge of climate science and climate management. Uh, we also know that and uh, there are demand uncertainties implying that uh, because of the fact that the market for uh, carbon is not really uh, very 
uh, functioning in a way that we will be able to determine how much we will get from selling carbon, it's very difficult for us to uh, have the right investment made in Africa or to be able to channel uh, the limited resources into that. Uh, we also know that some of these uh, uh, initiatives that have been discussed are based on uh, uh, forests. So if you are a country within the continent that do not have access to uh, forest stock or your forest stock is you are not well endowed with forest stock you may not be able to have access to some of these uh, uh, benefits and most importantly uh, Africa is bedeviled with weak institutions uh, I have been working on the fisheries sector uh, fisheries management and you will clearly see that the institutions uh, that uh, govern the fisheries in many countries within the continent along the coast are very weak so Obviously, you have over harvesting or people investing too much effort than they are supposed to be investing in the fishery, and this leads to over harvesting and eventually life, uh, the, the living conditions of, of those fishermen have been deteriorating over time. Now, uh, so the question is, what can aid do to Africa? And this is one area where I would like to spend some time uh, on. Uh, first of all, it is very important that we begin to uh, strengthen and build institutions in Africa. Uh, this is of paramount Im importance. And specifically, if we can develop <laughs> independent academic institutions, and here what I mean is that we try to nurture, we, we establish and nurture institutions that will be able to train Africans uh, on the knowledge that we need to be able to address this problem. This will go a long way to provide uh, the needed ingredient to solving the problem. Uh, for example, uh, we have situation, uh, back to the fisheries again, uh, we have a situation in Ghana where, uh, where I, I come from, where there has been mixed signals that have been sent to the fisheries industry. On one hand, we have the catch per unit effort, meaning the catch that fishermen get per trip declining over time, but government still subsidizing fishing boats uh, by way of giving subsidies on, uh, on pre-mixed fuel, uh, government uh, providing uh, echo sounders to fishermen to be able to catch more fish, whilst we know, or there is evidence out there that catch per unit effort is going down or fishermen are catching less and less fish. The only reason, or one of the main reasons that this is happening is because uh, perhaps uh, the government have little knowledge about the stock dynamics, the dynamics of the stock over time. Perhaps because occasionally you have some upward surges in catches, they feel that, well, uh, maybe the stock will come back. And fishermen themselves, if you talk to them, you realize that they lack the knowledge of the fact that when you harvest too much of the stock today, there is less to be harvested tomorrow. So education is very important, both in terms of building local academic institutions and educating uh, the players involved, such as the fishermen, to better understand how uh, those resources uh, uh, behave, and then uh, perhaps that will give them the opportunity to, to manage them sustainably. And if you ask me, if you have uh, aid and you are thinking about where to invest it, which area will be the most important area to invest the aid, I will talk about institutions. And this will include building uh, academic institutions, uh, eventually managed by Africans or managed by developing countries, in, the, in, the, in those countries, and then uh, nurturing those institutions to become independent to, to tackle this problem. I think that is where my money will go, institution building, including academic institution. And then, uh, in addition to the institutions, uh, or building uh, the institutions and training those, uh, uh, I mean, people in the developing countries to understand their problems, there's a need for investment to be made in research and development, because if we do not direct resources uh, to research and development, it will be very difficult for those institutions to stand the test of time. If you are well trained and you don't have the resources to be able to do research, to come out with findings that will influence policy, uh, the knowledge may even disappear over time. And we've seen this happening. Some people from Africa training out, outside of Africa, going home, but because of lack of resources to engage in research and development, over time they lose the, that capacity. So. Uh, resources for capacity, uh, resource for research is very important. Uh, it is also important that we support communities uh, to adapt 
and then uh, mitigate uh, climate impact. This is very, very important because there is uh, some connectivity or there is some uh, relationship between adaptation and mitigation. For example, uh, as we saw this morning, uh, the funds that are allocated to the funds allocated to adaptation issues relative to mitigation issues is declining over time. This clearly means that uh, this clearly means that uh, over time, if nothing is done, uh, that this this uh, this Africa this developing countries will be moving more towards, or I encourage to move toward more towards mitigation than adaptation. But if it is, if we know that adaptation issues are very important to developing countries, that it's important that resources are directed at those adaptation issues as well. In, what I mean here is that, uh, for example, if if you do not provide resources for adaptation, let's say adaptation in agriculture, it is possible that the developing countries may for example, uh, cut down trees or cut down forests to expand the, the area that they devote to agriculture, and this may have implications for mitigation. So the two issues are related. Now, the other issue that I think is very important is that there is a need for some impact assessment to be done frequently. If you invest a lot of resources uh, in uh, uh, this, capacity building, and all the others we've talked about, but you do not carry out frequent assessment of the impact of what the resources or the aid is doing, eventually uh, this may lead to some form of rent seeking and corruption that we have seen in developing countries. Uh, in most cases, a lot of resources go to these developing countries for a lot of projects, but eventually some of the resources are not really allocated to what they are supposed to be doing. So there is a need for continuous assessment to be done, to assess the impact of the aid that is allocated to these developing countries. Even, finally, I would also like to say that perhaps most importantly, aid should be tied to good governance. Uh, there are situations where uh, we know aid is fungible. There are situations where people have misallocated the aid to other things that they are not supposed to use them for, or they allocated them to uh, doing other things that may gain them politically, I mean, uh, especially, again, a case in Ghana with regards to fisheries. Uh, a research, a paper that I did recently on uh, the, 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 the effect of aid on fisheries. Uh, I realized that when aid goes to fisheries capacity building, uh, the impact is a loss in the, in the industry. We, we realized that if you increase aid to capacity building, fisheries capacity, enhancement, for example, by 1%, the impact of that will be a loss of about 22 to 2.7% in catch losses within the fishery along uh, the coast of uh, sub-Saharan Africa. So indeed, uh, a very important point here is that aid should be tied to uh, good governance so that the aid is directed to, uh, for example, protecting and enhancing uh, the stock rather than uh, harvesting more of the stock today just to gain political, uh, uh, I mean, just to uh, win votes or uh, for polit uh, political ex expediency rather than supporting uh, uh, the stock of some of these resources. Thank you. Mm -hmm.